Uh, so I'm going to talk a bit about digital platforms. Then I'm going to talk about platform economics and giants. I'm going to talk about the industries affected. I'm going to talk a little bit about work being disrupted. We've already had a lot of great presentations today, and I'm going to try to put it into a little bit of a bigger picture or a different picture, maybe a California perspective, but let me try it anyway and see if it will work. And I'm going to talk a little bit because we've already had a lot of talks here on new work. Right? Old work is being disrupted, and obviously that's the concern by m many of us, that a lot of old work is going away or is going to be transformed. We've also had a lot of discussion already about new work that's appearing. What the balance will be, we don't know now. We do know that capitalism always has always in the past created new work. Will it this time? Who knows? And then just a, a few concluding thoughts. So metaphorically, perhaps drawing upon Josie, but maybe going a little further in a little different direction, uh, we at Bree believe that we're in the midst of a reorganization of the global economy in which digital platform owners are developing power that will be as formidable, I think more formidable, but let me be a conservative here, as that of the factory owners in the early industrial revolution. This is a big deal, in other words. And, I, I, and again, I point to some of you in Europe who actually saw it probably in some ways better than we American scholars, maybe not as, quite as well as the Silicon Valley entrepreneurs as early, but you guys saw it, some of you, earlier than we did. And, and one way of thinking about this, it's a metaphor. So, you know, I was, just gave a talk to a computer science department at the University of Milan, and he said, well, how, well, how is data oil? And it's not really oil, et cetera, et cetera, because it's never used up, et cetera. But anyway, I think we can think of this in some ways as data being the new oil. If you think about Google and Facebook, it's the data. Right, it's the data, and then of course, it's, then they asked me, and I said, it's the algorithm. They said, can you separate algorithms from data? Oh, I don't know. Okay, so, but let's think about algorithms, software, are the machines that create wealth and value, right? So if you think about Google's value, it's really in its data and its algorithms, right? And, and these are not inexpensive. I mean, Google spends probably uh, five to ten billion dollars a year on data centers, etc. So this is not inexpensive. So. If, I'm going to sort of frame my talk this way, and, and let's see how it works. Um, so platforms organize interaction and production, and we had some questions today about terms and conditions, rules of the space of interaction. I think this is the other thing is that these platforms are creating the rules for the space of interaction across vast, uh, vast swaths of activity. Right? I mean, if you think about your kids, or I think about my students, how much of their time is on uh, smartphones? Much less computers. If it's five, six hours a day, that five or six hours a day now of interaction is being organized by sets of rules, right? Private sector rules, but rules. And of course, we know this, these lock-ins are extremely powerful and create enormous social pressures economic pressures in certain directions. So I'll try to talk about these, give you sort of a flavor of what we're thinking about at Brie, but uh, understand that this is a relatively short presentation. This, I'm sorry, it's, 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 uh, the background's not good. This is 2002, the top 10 most valuable firms in the world. You may have heard of some of these companies, probably did. Uh, BP, Shell, there's old IBM, somebody mentioned the dinosaur yesterday. Um, or, or earlier today, there's ExxonMobil. Here is, that's November 2017. Stock markets had some fluctuations, so probably a little bit, but none of these have fallen out of the top 10. What's interesting here is obviously only Microsoft and Johnson & Johnson, the uh, pharmaceutical company, survives in the top 10. But more interesting, in some sense, depending on what you think is interesting, is Alibaba and Tencent have replaced Shell and BP, if you want to look at it that way. So of the top 10 most valuable firms in the world, seven are platform firms. That's kind of interesting. You know? so, so, I mean, clearly the stock market is a bubble for sure, but even if these stocks drop by a half, they're going to be in the top most powerful companies in the world. And if you think that this trajectory is not an ending, but in some sense perhaps beginning, 
well, you can see where this, this is going. This is Google services by date of in, uh, uh, monthly annual users by date of introduction hitting 1.5 billion users. If they're more or less 8 billion, I don't know how many people there are in the world, let's say they're 8 billion, you cannot access 1.5 billion in China. That's pretty good, right? So we have Google search, we have YouTube, we have Android, and I don't know what the other, and Chrome at 1.5, above, above 1.5 billion users. Okay, it took a relatively long time. Here we have Google Drive in 2015, introduced in 2015, and it has 800 million users. When have we seen technology and innovation spread this fast? Again, it was brought up a little earlier today, but there's basically, what is 33% of the world is on smartphones, of which, let's say, 10 to 12% of those are in China, so take them off. And you introduce a new product, and in four years, it's got, it's north of five, six, seven hundred million people. I mean, think about how long it took the car to move out, electricity, some of these other innovations, right? So there's a whole infrastructure out there to absorb innovations, absorb new apps, et cetera, et cetera. Not quite like that, but you know. Five, six, eight hundred million in two or three years, that's, that's a big number. So I just want to, it sort of sets the stage again for what we're looking at. And when you think about the state regulating something like this, something as at 500 million in two years, I mean, you're a small country, so you can move fast. The US government can't move that fast. So part of this is how quickly Uber can go like that, and all of a sudden it's on top of you. Now, Europeans, and I agree with you 100%, have controlled uh, Uber, thankfully, but it gives you a feeling of just how quickly change can be on top of you and almost overrunning you. So this is Amazon's expansion. I mean, the, the Europeans, uh, I was just talking with uh, a few people about comparison shopping, which you punished Google for its comparison shopping, you know, ranking systems, et cetera. I just thought it was the Amazon protection that uh, was what the Europeans really were trying to do, is protect Amazon. Because it's Amazon that's the, the competitor, it's not the comparison shopping sites. These are trivial. Uh, but let's just look at it. Amazon, this is an old statistic, it's the only one I could find, 400 million SKUs, separate product categories, SKUs, right? Uh, you know, books, that's a very old one. Basically, my students today, if I talk about a book, they don't know what books are, but, uh, uh, but anyway, if I talk about a book and they go look it up, they don't look it up at the university card catalog. You look at an Amazon, Amazon's got better collection, better, broader collection of books than the card catalog, come on, right? That's ancient history. So, uh, of course, Amazon Web Services, the largest uh, web services uh, operation in the world now where you can contract. If you're a do, a do a startup today, you don't build your own server farm. You contract with Amazon, contract with Google for it. That way, what was a capital investment now has become a variable cost that if you grow like this, you can scale your, um, you can scale your, your compute power, okay? So what's interesting about Amazon, the other thing about these platforms is the visibility that data gives you into the supply chain. Amazon today, I'll talk about it very briefly a little later, 46% of all online retail in the United States is through Amazon. That's about 9% of total US retail sales growing at about 1% a year. It's a big number, right? Which means Amazon has more visibility into the supply chain than UPS and FedEx. Right, UPS, I don't know whichever one you're using. Here, if you're using Amazon here, Amazon has more visibility into it. With 46% of online retail, they've almost got you know, 30% of the shipments. They have total visibility. So 
They have warehouses. They have fulfillment. They have their own ground fleet. They're developing their own ground fleet. They've got their own airplanes in the United States. And they've got their own sea freight. Amazon is going to destroy FedEx and UPS unless they change. Fact. That's what's so interesting about these platforms is you have visibility, transparency. I brought that word up a little earlier. Transparency into the supply chain. Transparency into you as a consumer. That's what's going on. That's why Amazon is the real story here. And Google, of course. That's why Facebook, European privacy, even if you destroy Facebook, it really doesn't matter. Facebook, of course, controls our networking and the popular part popular part of our lives, but these other two control the other parts. I can go into Amazon more, but I just give you a flavor. I give you the slides, etc. But the other thing is, of course, we talk about antitrust and competition policy. Right? This is vertical integration, but Amazon says we give you the lowest prices. Not only that, in the Amazon marketplace are all its competitors. Lena Khan has written a great paper on this. Amazon has visibility into every competitor. Amazon knows if you have an Amazon shop, they know exactly what you sell and to who. They know more about your business than you do, which means they can absorb your business any time they wish. Right? The other story of platforms, I won't talk about it so much, is of course, if you own the platform, you have vis visibility into your ecosystem. So if a part of your ecosystem becomes very important, you just absorb it, right? There was a guy who started the flashlight, designed a flashlight app on the iPhone. He made a lot of money, and Apple said, well, that's a great innovation, and integrated in the iPhone. His business was gone. Right? So platforms are built on ecosystems, and ecosystems mean that I, the platform owner, has visibility into the ecosystem, and there's something interesting in the ecosystem that may threaten me or may create value, I just integrate it. Right? This is straightforward platform economics, but when we think of it on the scale that we're talking about, it moves from the economics textbooks, Roche and Tirole, to the real world. Oh, oh my gosh, this is interesting. Okay, so society is being reorganized. The way people get news and information, right, is being rewired. That's what the whole Russian thing is in the United States, in my opinion, is the news channels have been rewired. Fake news, who knows what fake news is? The New York Times knew that there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Uh, there weren't, right? Um, so. Right? So that is what I see these testimonies wise because the actual way that we get news has been rewired away from CBS, NBC, and, and the New York Times. So it's a way of thinking about it. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm saying that's the way I understand things. So the old channels are being broken. Of course, then there's how my students know everything. It's through Wikipedia, right? I mean, right? It's another channel of information. Dating, 33% of US marriages start online. That's how they met. Well, that's a fairly, uh, you know, rewiring of a certain activity that human beings take, uh, participate in. I won't talk, I'll come back to this, but there's uh, Woody Powell uh, has written a wonderful, no, no, not Woody Powell, uh, Fiona Murray's article on TripAdvisor. It's a brilliant article. Supervision, right? A rating system, of course, is a supervision system. So you, the customer, are supervising uh, the restaurant when you rate them. When you say, oh, you go to a hotel and you say, oh, we're, we Americans, you know, we love to smile, right? So, so if you go to a hotel, the, the clerk should smile at you, even if you're an absolute ass, right? They should still smile at you. Right? If they don't smile and you put it on TripAdvisor, talk to someone at a hotel. What will happen if you say, oh, John didn't smile when uh, John checked me in? That person will be in trouble. Ask any waiter 
I do this. I ask the waiter, what happens if I give you a terrible thing? I say, oh, I look at your thing, oh, you're John, okay, right? If I say John was a nasty guy, what will happen to John? Most big restaurants actually have somebody who monitors the internet, monitors the social media. You are now a supervisor. You know this, of course we know this, but as a pr professor, well, they give me rating systems, but they don't count, but, um, right? We are now all supervisors. We've been sucked into being potential supervisors. Think about what happens to labor when your supervisor is, you don't know who this, your supervisor is. It could be anyone in front of you, right? Rewiring, again, ways things are done. Well, I'm gonna move along here. If you have any questions, any arguments, so please. Okay, so what is a digital platform? I won't talk about this. We know two-sided, multi-sided network effects, winner-take-all, lock-ins, increasing returns, long-tail markets. I just want to touch long-tail markets because we know all of these other ones, but long-tail markets, right? How many of you, I don't know, shop with Amazon for books? Oh, not everybody, okay. So some of you go somewhere else, okay. So in the United States, it's you know, 85, 90%. Right? What's so nice about Amazon? It's got everything, long tail market. Once I have everything, I lock you in because let's say you don't want to use Amazon, so you go somewhere else, but they don't have the product. You go back to Amazon. You try again, and they don't have the product. I, you know, my books are not like Josie's books. Mine are like rated about a million on Amazon. So you know, mine are out there on the long tail, right? Well. Right, if you can't find my book on your site, you go to Amazon, you find it. You try again on your site and you can't find it, you go to Amazon and you say, forget it. It's Amazon, right? So that's a piece that we often don't think about. So these big databases that a company like Amazon or uh, you know, other sales platforms have become incredible blockages to market entry. Because you go, why bother, right? We're, we're that way. So uh, we talked about ecosystems, so I won't bother with that. I'll move right along. So industries reorganized. Uh, I just pulled this off of CBI Insights yesterday. Google plans to use AI to reinvent the $3 trillion US healthcare system, right? Whether it's true or not that it's gonna do it, going to reorganize. It's this threat. It's this threat that's out there that is everywhere, almost in every industry, as the digital becomes more and more important for organizing and controlling the industry, operating the industry. So we know all of this. Finance, we've already had a number of finance presentations. Printed matter, how many of you have physical maps? Actually, I'm such as, okay. So most of you use physical maps here still in, uh, okay, your students don't use physical maps. Well, maybe in the Netherlands, I'm not sure. In my country, where I come from, the students don't know what a physical map is, except it's something on the wall that you look at and it's kind of pretty, it's a very artistic, right? Travel, I mean, again, many of you use travel agents, I'm sure, but some of us do things online. Music, entertainment, retail, manufacturing. With, the, the thing about digital, I'll describe it, is, is that not only does it reorganize industries, but it's, it's, it's a insidious. It's like mist. It comes in in all sorts of different ways and starts to reorganize an industry, industries. And I'll give you an example from the auto industry as a way of thinking about, it, uh, thinking about this. Okay, retail, just to give you an idea, this is... This is United States, 46% is Amazon. This is China's retail sales online. It will be 35% by 2020. Of all retail in China goes through a platform, right? WeChat, WePay, Alipay are the two big boys there. China's is way ahead of the United States. The innovations in China are far ahead of, of Europe or the United States. So, but it's just giving, giving you 
another picture of how things are being reorganized. So as you know, in a Chinese restaurant, you just scan the QR code and you pay right there, right? It's on the menu. And often there doesn't even need to be a waiter there because that is just transmitted to the, uh, to the kitchen, right, as you scan it. All right. The physical is still there, but now the physical, even the smallest shops, are integrated into the IT world. This is an old slide, but basically all this slide is saying is what happened to the, in the United States didn't happen in Europe as much, and that's why you have much nicer cities than we do, is the small retail stores weren't wiped out by the big boxes called Walmart. Now the digital is coming for Walmart and the big boxes. Another turn of the screw. Now what's so interesting about the digital is the digital doesn't need the physical and the automobile network to allow the Walmarts, which means the barriers in Europe to this happening may be partially dissolved. Again, I'm not an expert on Europe, so I don't pretend to speak about Europe, but it appears to me that that's possible. But anyway, the, the point of this is, this is 2017, I have some new statistics. 2018 is going to be a complete wipeout of, of uh, the, the, the box stores, the retailers. So, you know, retail business models, Amazon, Alibaba, new marketing channels, I'll talk a little bit about that. New one-time only brands. So people were talking about micro entrepreneurs and I'm gonna talk a little bit about brands that are being created completely online through Instagram. Again, as some of you are young enough in the audience, but if you were, if it was an audience of my undergraduates, they would know this absolutely. Brands created completely online. This is the retail store technology map. These are all venture capitalist firm, venture capital funded firms. Inventory management, pop-ups and kiosks, indoor fi in-store financing, consumer loyalty, shopping cart technology, packaging technology, blah, 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 blah. So what's interesting about this is if you're a retailer, you don't know where your disruption is coming from because you can pull the retail supply chain apart and attack every little piece of it with digital by reorganizing, right? A lot of it will be failure. 80% of these are what we call in California bullshit, right? They absorb 10, 15, 20 million dollars and they go away. Who cares? As long as there are three of them in there that disrupt the three billion, three trillion dollar industry, who cares? Right? So if you're a retailer today thinking about strategy, who's your competitor? Walmart, Target? No way. It's someone from here that's your competitor and you don't even know where they are. Or it could be Google or Amazon. So this is sort of, again, as a Californian, tell me when I'm running out of time, Californian way of thinking about this. Here's something that might be of interest to Germany an auto, a country that produces autos. Well, what are the vectors of change? If you think about the automobile supply chain, the whole thing from the, uh, from the retail, the car dealer, to you know, the parts makers. Well, for sure platforms are starting to affect supply chains. Industry 4.0 is part, I'm looking at you because you're German. Uh, sorry, I should look at somebody else. I won't pick on any more Germans. I pick, pick on the Germans and then they, they might get angry. Okay, so, uh, so I'll look at somebody else. Um, but anyway, the supply chain platforms would be one thing where you might get disruption. Who organizes the supply chain? Does it, does it go away from Mercedes organizing its supply chain to somebody else coming in, giving the digital and organizing the supply chain for all the parts suppliers? and all the automakers. Okay, 3D design, 3D printing, we know this. Prototyping today has changed dramatically. Car sales. Today in the United States, if I want, I just bought a car. I'm sorry, it's a Toyota. I be, I'm a, my wife is Japanese, so what can I do? Um, I bought a Toyota. Well, what did I do? I looked online 
and I looked at the prices, and of course you can look online and you can find the sticker price that the dealer's, the dealer's getting a car for, for. You more or less know that. You know what uh, rebates are coming from Toyota, Mercedes-Benz, whomever. Call up three dealerships. What's your price, what's your price, what's your price? And say, oh, his is the best price, but he's farther out of town and you're in town. And I say, well, that's his town. Uh, uh, okay, boom. $2,000, $20,000, whatever, you buy, you go pick your car up and you drive away. Why can't Amazon move into that space? What if Amazon moves into that space? What's, who has power? The, the car builder or Amazon? So you can get changing power, uh, power uh, relationships. DD, right? DD is the uh, Chinese Uber, Uber, Lyft, blah, blah car, right? Well, if they grow, will that mean, for example, the Toyota Hybrid, the Prius is sort of the, the car of the Ubers of the world. Maps and navigation, right? A car is moving through space. We're moving more towards autonomy of vehicles. I mean, we're not gonna get to autonomy very quickly, okay? But we're moving more towards autonomy. Who has power in that space? If the map becomes more and more important, Maybe the manufacturer is just the maker of a commodity. And the maps and the data is what's important. And maybe, you know, yeah, you're making a great car, but it's a commodity. And since 30, 40, 30, 35% of the value today in a car is in the electronics. Okay, I've got to move on. Uh, data upload, okay, we can move, 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 move. Okay, uh, Uber Upwork, we know all this, but the consignment platforms, YouTube, right? YouTube pays out already five, six billion dollars a year in revenues. Uh, of course, the Apple, the, um, the store pays out 25 billion to producers of apps. So I'll go through that. New online retail brands, all of these are online retail brands, didn't exist. They're completely online. They have no, no real physical location. They contract for warehouses. They contract for production in China, all online. You can use the Fung, the Fung, uh, Fung brothers. They used to do just uh, garments and textiles. Now they're doing almost everything out of China. You've got a new way of designing glasses. You design a glass, glasses, you, don't, you can design them in this room and put together a supply chain, all of it basically online. That's an exaggeration. But the basic principle is, tr is correct. Okay, I won't talk about the ecosystem. This is how a YouTuber makes money. This is the advertising, 55-45 split. They create books, they do personal, ex personal appearances. They have their own merchandise sales. So you wanna learn how to make sushi. There's a great guy who does sushi on there. He holds his knife up and he shows it to you. And he says, you can go to my Amazon store and buy this wonderful Japanese knife that'll let you cut sushi. He makes money that way. The makeup girls, right? How do they make money? Product placement, et cetera. So what I'm saying is that the new business models, fascinating, interesting, complicated business models. They use uh, crowdfunding as an income source, right? So we need to start to think about these new ways of doing things. I've got to move, I'm going to move. Okay, this is, this is labor intensity in e-commerce. This is e-commerce, the number of workers Per, uh, per million dollars in sales. I mean, we all know this statistic, but when you look at it, you go, oh, this is going to have an impact. It's not only gonna have an impact in that way, but if the downtown store goes away, the students who are nicely dressed, who are the clerks, will go away and the work will now be warehouse workers. Different kind of workers in different locations. We don't know a lot about this, but in the United States, we need to know about this because this is where work is going to be moving around if we're going to uh, control it. Okay, I won't talk about this. I won't uh, just talk about this. Lawyers' preliminary research done by algorithms in the United States. More and more, the preliminary research for lawyers is not done by law clerks. It's done by algorithms. All right. Computers scanning x-rays. Today, an x-ray can tell whether this is a cancer or uh, not an x-ray. A computer vision can tell whether this is cancer or a mole better than 95% of the doctors. This is already, you can read about it in science. 
Okay, I won't talk about that. Oh, I, I talked about that. Okay, finishing. Okay. Uh, so what's interesting here is greater wealth creation than ever. That's interesting. There's more wealth creation than ever. There's greater access to information than ever. They're increasing human capabilities. The blind are closer to see. Hearing loss can hear again. In many respects, maybe we're richer as a species than ever before. Maybe more dangerous to the environment, et cetera. But uh, you know, so uh, these are the positive things. The world is being brought closer together. The tools are out there for building cooperative platforms. Some folks were talking about this today. They are out there. Open source, convenience, the potential to expose bias. I mean, we have a racial problem in the United States. Right? The potential is there because things are more transparent to expose it. And so, I mean, there's a lot of positive news here. But, you know, I, I'm a social scientist, so I need to be gloomy. Well, the privacy issue, and we're going to hear about privacy. Winner take all. The platform owners are the big winners, leading to greater inequality. Entry barriers that protected people in industries, taxi cab drivers, the lower, that was an upper mobility for immigrants in the United States, is, of course, being broken as these, these things occur. Algorithms making decisions that are hard to explain anymore. It's a big issue, again, around, around race, access to credit, et cetera. Okay, so does, Indus, does Europe have a role? I have to get, ask you this question. Right, uh, Industry 4.0 is clearly the most organized response, right? Uh, present, prevent perhaps the Google over the top, uh, present, prevent the platform owners from sucking the value out of the manufacturing enterprise. Uh, the comparison shopping decision, 2.5 million fine for Google. It didn't seem to me that this was a serious attack on the true issues. <laughs> And the true issue in this space is Amazon, not Google. Uh, that doesn't prevent uh, Google from being a problem. Uh, at this point, it doesn't seem, seem like we're, we're generating, or Europe is generating competitors that are better than the US giants. That may happen in the future, perhaps with another set of values that then would become, um, become uh, generalized. And you know, so I think we have to think about that. And Europe probably needs to think about, does it have a strategy to prevent this California over the top? And I, I say California, but Amazon is out of Seattle. I could say West Coast over the top. I won't talk about China, but thus far the Chinese are in the China market and have not yet penetrated out, but they've created a set of innovations that are unseen anywhere else in the world uh, that are quite interesting. But uh, since we don't have time, I think. OK, so platform-based reorganizations affecting industrial structure, labor. For people like me, the concern about inequality, which is already awful in the United States, is going to likely get worse. The power of governments, that's been alluded to over and over here. What is the power of government? In the case of Uber, power is pretty pretty strong. In the case of Amazon, we haven't yet seen what the power of government and regulation. It's affecting entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship's moving on to the platforms. Moves on to the platforms, the platform owner ultimately controls the entrepreneur. And I think that's kind of interesting. And then international trade, all issues that are being affected. Big overview. Thank you very much. <laughs>